Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to play the guitar with a reggae feel and also so similar. So we're gonna talk about also how to get a ska feel, which is just speeding it up a lot. But there's a lot of subtleties. If you're interested in this, it's really fun uh, to play with. There are a lot of little subtle technique elements to get the right kind of reggae feel. It's not just playing on the two and four or just playing on the off beats, but we'll talk about all of that, the chord voicings, the technique, how to do it, how to get the sound. Uh, let's dive in. The first thing I wanna share is just the most common reggae chord progression. And this is just from hearing it all the time. If you hear a reggae tune happening so often, the chord is a one chord to a two chord and back. Not all the time, obviously, but it's just, it's interesting how common that is. Uh, there's a song I'm thinking of right now uh, called Police and Thieves, which was uh, popularized as a kind of a punk rock reggae version that The Clash did from their debut album in 1977, if you're a punk rock fan or a Clash fan at all. Um, but it's a tune by the artist Junior Mervin, and the, it's in the key of G, and the verses, the main part of it, is G major to A minor, the one chord to the two chord. A lot of times I'll talk about these chords with numbers, one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, because it's such a useful way to think of your chords and structures through a key because then you can play in any key, any progression, transpose, stuff like that. So this would be the one chord G major to A minor, the two chord of the key. So I just wanted to acknowledge that we're going to use that as our sample chord progression and start listening for reggae tunes that maybe have those two chords going back and forth. Uh, let's dive into a few of the chord voicings that you can use to work on this. So the voicings that we want to play at first to work on this are voicings that have notes on the top three strings, four strings, the upper part of the chords on the guitar. So we're going to be playing um, and trying to hit the top three strings or four strings. If you are playing with a pick and you ha have a pick guard, that's very helpful because we're actually going to be kind of intentionally digging into the pick guard a little bit. Here's the first voicing I want to teach you. This is a major chord with the root on top, the fifth and the third. And this gets the root of the chord on the top. And this is the other voicing we'll do as the A minor. So this is G major, and this is A minor. Okay, so three note voicings. Now I actually have a preference for playing it slightly differently, but that's the first thing to work on. You can also now add four note voicings where you have the root of the chord here also. So now we have one, three, five, one. If you don't know what I mean by that, just look at the shape and know that I'm playing a G major chord. And this is, if you wanna play a major chord, this is one of the shapes to work on. And if you wanna play a minor chord, this is another shape to work on. That's a four note, top four strings, minor chord, top four strings, major chord, okay? So this is helpful because we want to, I'll talk about the technique in a second, how to make it short and grooving how we want, but we're gonna be playing, kind of emphasizing those top strings so those voicings make sense. Now, you can do this actually with a full shape, and this is mostly how I prefer to do it for a couple reasons. One, the full shape of this big full bar chord, big G major bar chord, and you're only really actually barring here and then your first finger's touching this one. So you don't squeeze too hard, you don't need to, you just need a little pressure there to get that full chord there. I like this because by touching all the strings and when we let go of them, which we're gonna talk about in a second, it serves to mute all the other strings. Whereas you might have noticed when I played up here, I had to put my pinky down or especially this one, kind of putting these fingers down to mute these strings from getting, I'm not even plucking these strings, but they're gonna kind of sympathetically vibrate. And if you do accidentally pluck them, then you're gonna get some sounds that are really undesirable, especially depending on what key that you're in. So I kind of like playing this full one and then emphasizing playing, I'm actually playing the top strings. And there's a few ways to strum this. I'm just giving this, using this one style as an example the whole time, but until we talk about the actual strumming technique in a sec. Now I like this also, not just because it mutes the strings, I like it because I can occasionally hit the bottom note to ground me in the, for the, where the strong beat is. So like one, boom. So I can just kind of lightly play that or more of the chord. I'll do a little bit of a different feel. You don't have to do that, but when I'm playing by myself, it's really helpful because it's kind of where the bass player would play something or the keys would like, boom, there'd be a something kind of accenting the actual strong beat. And this is 
an accompaniment style. This is not really meant to be on its own. So if you are on your own, you can play that and ground yourself with the time. So a couple options there for chord voicings. Two more things. If you want to play a voicing that has the root on the fifth string, let's go to like D major here. This is totally fine too, where I'm borrowing strings four, three, and two. And you may, gotta make sure that the top string is just clicking, okay? This works too. Nice and short, we're gonna talk about that very soon. Then you can play a minor chord with the fifth string, the root on the fifth string. And this time you can bar this top note to get a higher kind of pitch. You can also choose to let go of the pressure there and have this note be the top note. So a lot of options there for different chord types to play with. Let's switch now to talking about the subtlety of the technique, the strumming, how to make it short sounding, how to make it groove. The first thing I wanna say about the strumming technique itself is just the sound of how short the chords need to be. We need to make them. I have a little reverb there, but we want that as short staccato as possible. You don't want, and you can, you can do anything you want. You do what you like the sound of perfectly fine, but try to practice this really short. So I'm just touching all the strings. I'm not putting any pressure down right now. And then I'm gonna put the pressure down just barely for a very short time, but also actually not fully putting the pressure down. Here, here's how it sounds if I fully put the pressure down. And if I kind of partially do, I can get this almost kind of palm muted, half muted sound. So try it with a single note anywhere where you go short note, short note, short note, and then you go. Notice how I'm not, I'm actually not pushing it down all the way. So you can get an even shorter note and you can just choose for yourself, you know, what you like the sound of and the taste of the best. Notice that. That's me not actually pushing the strings down all the way. Here, if I do, Also great sound, right? Your choice, but ooh, different. Really just so, such a little punch, such a little punchy sound there. So good to kind of go all the way to as short as possible with that punchy sound of not pushing the strings down all the way, just to see where you can, what you can get away with and then pull it back to whatever you like that sounds the best and have fun with it. Choose a reggae song to play and work with it. Let's talk about the actual strumming technique now. For the strumming hand, here's what you want to work on. I'm gonna give you three options. You can do all down strokes and remember just the top strings. You probably don't want this. Again, do whatever you like and wanna do, but this is me hitting all the strings. You're gonna to wanna to actually just hit the top strings. And again, I'm kind of very, one of the rare instances that I'm actually leaning into the pit guard on purpose. I'm like, because I'm going this way towards the strings. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, can be helpful to kind of do a, an extra strum, like one, two, three, four, one. A strum that you're not plucking with, not actually hitting the strings with. Okay, or you could do all ups, down, where you go down and then you go, that's gonna get a bitier sound because you're coming up from the top string. That one's gonna work really well. You're going down, I'm kind of even going down and hitting on the pick guard and coming up from there. Oh, and I'll say kind of alternative thing here is you can click, click wherever you want to on the muted strings between strums. Click, strum, click, up, click, up, click, strum. So you could do it all the time. You could do it sometimes. You find what you like the sound of. Here's the way I've been demonstrating it throughout the lesson where I'm going down. I'm actually doing the down and then a very quick up right away. I'm kind of doing every other. So I'm going down, up, down, down, up, down, and getting a lot of the clicks in between. Down, up, down, down, up, super short, top, I'm basically I'm aiming for like, almost aiming for just the top two strings. Down, up, down, down, up, down, and kind of swinging the, the clicks in between. 
hitting some of the cord on the bottom to so we can feel where the time is there. So that's those are your options. None of them are better or worse. You could just kind of play with them. Listen to if you're a fan of you know any reggae songs or want to choose one or want to do a cover of a song or whatever. Just listen for what you like best and and play around with it and maybe look up some classic reggae tunes. Look up this song, uh, Police and Thieves by Junior Mervin and just listen to how the vibe of that uh, reggae feel on the guitar is in the background. And the same type of feel is done with other instruments too. You'll hear like organs doing these little punches just in the same kind of rhythmic spot that we can do on the guitar just with, with this genre in general. Okay, lastly, as a little bonus, let's talk about getting a ska feel because it's the same technique, but just really fast. And this one, you pretty much just want to go click up, click, click, strum up, click, strum up. Really short and then speed it up. And occasionally hitting the down with it. So like down, up, down, up. Adding a little extra down sometimes. And you could try to get it really fast. Work on that if you want to. Stuff I used to play a long time ago as a teenager um, in bands that played that kind of music. So fun to play with if you want kind of a variety of sounds to, to work with or just to understand how that works a little bit. If you want some chord progressions to play with this on, I have a list of the 20 most common chord progressions and it's in my chord chart called Chords With Color. It's kind of a bonus section at the end of the chord chart that has listed out for you the 20 most common chord progressions. And so if you wanna work on a reggae feel with a bunch of different chords, then grab that chord chart. It's also awesome for a bunch of reasons and you can use it to practice some really great chord voicings, understand some theory, learn your chords through the key and get these common chord progressions. That's for free with the link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chordswithcolor to download that PDF. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week, my video is about harmonizing a melody. If you make up a melody in your head, you whistle something, you come up with a melody. How do you add chords to it? How do you know what chords can go to it? We're gonna do that in the next video. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.